Hey everyone, got a new player of the week section on eFootball. As always, I'll put links in the description for each player. So if there's a particular player you want to hear about, click the description. There'll be a link to take you straight to him. So let's have a look at what we got. We'll start with the last rate as always. We've got a one four star this week, Sierra from Toulouse. And this guy is just not particularly great, to be honest. Uh, box to box, centre midfielder, uh, same positions and play styles. His base card. Passing is pretty good. Ball control is good, but outside of that, I mean, the stamina is decent, but there's not really a lot here to, to talk about, to be honest. Uh, Skill-wise, he's got some decent ones. Certainly with finishing, rising shot, long range shooting, first time shot. Heel trick's nice. One touch pass and weighted pass are obviously good for centre mid, but there's no through passing. No interception either. So, yeah, uh, honestly, if you're a Toulouse fan, if you like this guy in real life, sure, he might be a fun one to pick up. But for anyone else, I don't think this is a great guy. Unless you're new to the game and you're desperate for centre midfield options. I just don't think he's got enough qualities on the whole, really. I don't think this is a great card. So now we've got Pacheco from Sociedad, young centre-back. So, he's not bad, to be honest. I mean, he's barely a five-star. Um, the one obvious weakness, the defensive engagement at 80 is, is pretty low. Uh, he's not too aggressive either. If you like your centre-backs to be more aggressive, that's obviously a concern. But the awareness and tackling are decent. Pace is okay for a centre-back. Jumping and physical are decent. Heading 83 is decent as well. 184. He's not the tallest centre back, but he's not short, so he's not going to be a beast in the air. But he'll he'll be decent. Uh, we'll look at the skills. It does have aerial superiority. Um, they've given him that. They've given him heading as well. So heading and aerial superiority have both been added. Likewise, blocker. So compared to his his base card, this is an upgrade with, in terms of the skills. Man marking interception already there. Acrobatic clearance likewise. Weighted pass a nice one for centre back. And his passing is decent for centre back. Build up playing style, left footed build up. It's not too many good left footed build ups. Yeah, it's a decent card on the whole. Um, like I say, I think it's just the defensive engagement. I don't see any other weaknesses with this guy really. Um, maybe the aggression as well. That's, that's more preference, I think. But certainly outside of that, he's got some decent attributes. He's not an amazing card by any means. Like I say, at 92, he's barely in that five star tier really. But with only that one real weakness and and. Quite a few decent attributes had to be honest. I think it's a decent card for what it is. Uh, certainly, I think for people who've been playing the game a while, if you've got a lot of good centre backs, you're probably not going to be getting in your team. But if you pick this guy up and you're lacking centre back options in any given week, he could certainly do a job for you. So yeah, not an amazing card, but a fairly solid one. Then we have Marusic from Lazio, scored a last minute winner against Juventus, and it was a header. So they have obviously given him heading. He's already got error superiority. Um, blocker and sliding tackle I think are the other ones they've added already got interception so yeah not a lot going forward but defensively he's got a pretty good selection of skills there for a fullback he's got a whole bunch of positions they've changed it from left back, left back to right back he's right footed uh, but they've not actually added any positions so his registered position makes no difference he's basically a fullback who can play on either side with no skills going forward like crossing for example I wouldn't use him in any of his more attacking positions on either wing. I don't think he's really got the, the ability to do that. But as a fullback, decent pace. Um, they've actually slightly nerfed his, his speed and his kicking power from his, his GP card, which is a bit strange. They do do that on, on a lot of these player of the week cards for, for whatever reason. But uh, otherwise, a bit of a nice boost across the board, really. Um, the defensives are okay. Uh, they, it, I would like them to be better, but with a decent session of skills for, the, for defending, with like interception and so on, I think he can certainly do a job defensively, um, and certainly physically. He's got heading and arrows priority, 82 physical, 73 jumping, he's about 6 foot 1, so for a fullback he's decent in the air. Balance isn't the best though, um, but stamina is good. On the ball, yeah, you'll have to be careful on the ball, he's clearly not a dribbler, he's not going to feel too comfortable, especially being about 6 foot 1, and with poor balance. So on the ball he's a little bit iffy. The low and lofty pass with a decent game plan boost, he'll be 80 plus in both of those. He doesn't have pinpoint crossing, so I don't ask too much of him with his crossing, but it, it should be decent enough as long as you don't ask too much. His low and lofty pass are both decent. So, yeah, on the whole, um, to be honest, I think if he had a defensive fullback playing style, his attributes and his skills would suit him better. I think he'd work better that way. You could put the defensive instruction on him and find he's a pretty useful defensive fullback. But without doing that and using him as an attacking fullback, he is a bit lacking going forward. Not great on the ball. No real skills like pinpoint crossing going forward. But certainly defensively, re pretty reasonable, especially, especially with the skills. Not so much the attributes, but yeah, it's kind of like a stylistically like a kind of like a Di Lorenzo, maybe even a Carl Walker in terms of the way his, his his attributes are balanced and the skills he's got. Obviously not as good as those two players, but 
yeah, like I say, could put a defensive instruction on him, find it quite useful. And even if you don't, he's got enough qualities all around. I think he's a solid right back option. Now we've got our first booster. We've got Sergio Ramos. So this is a decent version of Ramos. Uh, change it from extra frontman to destroyer. Um, unwavering form. To be honest, I mean, again, like a lot of centers they put in player of the week. Defensive engagement is a bit on the low side. You kind of expect that with Ramos, though. Um, there, there was a previous player of the week that was very similar to this. Uh, but that was a build-up playing style. And this one does have the booster as well. Um, on the whole, it's slightly better than the GP card. Um, also worth bearing in mind, Sergio Ramos is currently available in the La Liga pack. There is a La Liga pack that's currently in the game. Uh, it's going to be available for a while now. Uh, that's got the extra front man playing style like his, his uh, GP card. This is pretty similar, to be honest. You can train that one though, so you can put skills on it, and you can, you know, you can readjust the, you know, the way his balance, his attributes are balanced. But um, yeah, pretty similar. Just worth keeping that in mind. But uh, yeah, this is a booster. So if we activate activate this booster, as you see, he gets a little bit of a boost on his speed and his stamina, which is important. He needs that, and his defensive awareness and tackling get a boost as well. So on the whole. Defensive engagement is a pretty big concern, but outside of that, some very good defensive attributes. He's good on the ball for a centre-back. Heading and jumping are great. Physical contact, 85. Like I say, he's he's clearly not going to be quick, but he's had a bit of a boost to his speed and his stamina, so he's it, it's a bit less of a concern now. And if we look at the, uh, the skills he's got, uh, they have taken away weighted pass and replaced it with blocker. So a bit of a shame he's lost weighted pass. That can be a nice one, but I think blocker certainly... A more important one for centre back. It's a nice addition for him. So he's got heading and aerial superiority. Can be very good in the air. Aquatic clearance, sliding tackle, fighting spirit down there, blocker interception and He's got pretty much the complete set for a centre back. So yeah, um for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of Sergio Ramos, but I'd much rather have this version with the destroyer playing style and with this booster, especially when he's on form compared to an extra front man version. Like I say, it's similar to the uh the build up version we had. The booster makes it a bit better though uh, when he's on form and it's similar to the ones in the La Liga pack so keep that in mind but um, on the whole yeah de defensive engagement too low for me but outside of that it's got a lot of qualities and I think on the whole it's a pretty good centre back card so yeah good version of Sergio Ramos and for once they put a player in player of the week who played well for Newcastle instead of against Newcastle thanks Konami so uh, yeah Harvey Barnes Another one of these cards where you compare it to his GP card. Ball control has been nerfed. Tight possession has been nerfed. Attacking awareness is down a bit as well. Balance is down a bit. So in those ways, he's apparently worse this week than he normally is. Uh, yeah, I don't understand Konami's thinking with these cards. But they have boosted his passing and his finishing. Uh, giving him a bit more pace. Uh, I, think, I think his physicals are up a, bit, a little bit as well. Uh, Skill-wise, before we continue with the attributes... They have, of course, made him a super sub because he came off the bench and scored twice. Um, and they're giving him long-range shooting. So a couple of nice additions there. He's already got long-range curler. So for a right footer playing on the left, long-range curler, very good skill to have, very important. Hill trick's a nice one. First time shot as well. Uh, through passing and pinpoint crossing. He's not got a brilliant lower lofted pass, but they will help. Um, but yeah, with first time shot, long-range shooting, long-range curler, certainly. Finishing 79, that will go past 80 with the game plan boost. So he's going to have a decent shot on him coming in from the left flank onto his right foot as a prolific winger as well. Could be very effective. He does a very nice dribbling. The dual control and tight position, like I say, have been they're lower than his base card for some bizarre reason. So he's not going to be brilliant on the ball all around. But when he when he you know when he get up to speed with him with the pace he's got, dribbling 88, he should be able to you know should be pretty nice at carrying the ball. The low and lofty pass, as I say, he's got through passing and pinpoint crossing, but don't ask too much for him because they're still not particularly high. Um, so not a great end product with his passing. Um, lofty pass, pinpoint crossing, maybe he's, you know, if you cut inside onto his right foot, put an in-swinger into the box, maybe he's. But uh, I think with the skills he's got, the finishing, the play style, the pace and dribbling, it's pretty clear what this guy's good at. Getting the ball on the left wing, cut inside onto his right foot could be very effective. It's not a, not a top-level card by any means, like I say, with the control and type possession being a bit lower, I'd like a bit more passing on him. I'd like a bit more balance on him as well, but he does have a lot of qualities. So as a pacey guy, getting on the ball, cutting onto his right foot, could be very effective, I think. Not an amazing card, but a decent one, and certainly for a Newcastle fan like me, I'm very keen to get this guy. Now we have our goalkeeper, Karnasechi. So we had a nominating contract version. I think it was the previous nominating contract one, Golden Boys, maybe. Um, 
pretty similar on the whole. Uh, the difference between this card and that nominated contract version is that this one can't jump because obviously this is a player of the week version. This is based on him at his best. And when someone's at their best and they're a goalkeeper, according to Konami, they can't jump anymore compared to when they're not at their best. I always have that rant. I'm never going to stop having that rant until they fix it because it's absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, like I say, if you've got the nominating contract version, he can jump a lot higher. But this guy's better at shot stopping. And on the whole, awareness pretty good. 87. Current catching and parrying, both reasonable. Reflexes and reach, both 90 plus before the game plan boost. So he's great there. And with, with the way managers are now, with the, the top managers, I think I think certainly Guardiola, possibly one to others, but certainly Guardiola, you can get plus three on some players. So he might get up to 90 with the awareness of the game plan boost. So yeah, on the whole, a pretty solid goalkeeper. Good shot stopper, good coverage. Uh, just can't jump as high as he normally can. And the nominating contract version can jump higher, but this guy is certainly a better shot stopper than the nominating contract card. So yeah, on the whole, uh, not as good as the elite keepers. If you've got legends like Czech and Schmeichel and so on, you probably won't need him. But certainly for the Italian League Challenge, keep that in mind. Could be just one to pick up. And on the whole, yeah, a solid goalkeeper. Just can't jump, obviously. Then we have left-back Hanchko. So we have had two player of the week Hanchkos before. We've had a centre-back build-up which is what his uh, base card is. And we've also had a left back, which was an attacking fullback. This time, he's a left back defensive fullback. So, not, as I mentioned, he's normally a, a build up center back. Um, the previous center back version, pretty similar to this, to be honest. Uh, if you were gonna play this guy as a center back, which you still can, not a lot of difference between this one and the previous one, a few attributes slightly higher or lower, but on the whole, pretty similar. Um, this is better than the attacking fullback version that we previously had. I don't think there's any question on that. They have slightly nerfed his defensive engagement, I think. Uh, but other than that, defensively pretty much the same to his base card. And they have boosted his pace. And his technicals are up. So, yeah, as you expect, really. They make a centre-back into a fullback. He's going to be a bit more mobile, a bit more pace, a bit more technicals. As a defensive fullback, I think he looks pretty pretty decent, pretty solid. Um, if we have a look at his skills, you see he's got heading uh, for a guy who's six foot two. Heading doesn't have aerial superiority. Jumping seventy four, he'll be decent in the air for a fullback, not brilliant. I think if he plays this guy as a centre back, yes, he's tall, but seventy four jumping, no aerial superiority. I'm not convinced he'd be great in the air, but uh, yeah, he's got heading uh, and then weighted pass and low off the pass are nice uh, for a defender. Then man marking, interception, sliding tackle, acrobatic clearance. So he's got some good skills defensively. Not a lot going forward, but he's a defensive fullback. So defensive skills are good. They've added one skill and it's double touch. I'm not sure a six foot two defensive fullback is really someone you need double touch on. But if you like doing double touches, as I know a lot of you do, some of my friends are very big on that. You'll enjoy that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, on the whole, he's a pretty big physical left back defensive forward playing style there aren't that many good defensive fullbacks around so if you like that playing style he could be just one to pick up we don't get any era de Vizier challenges so there's no league challenges that we're useful for which is a bit of a shame but uh yeah defensively strong engagement's a little bit low but he's not going to be getting forward too much uh, but as a defensive fullback the awareness and tackling are very good they'll be 90 plus with the game plan boost Pace for a fullback is a little bit lacking for me. Um, it's not the slowest, but he's not the quickest either. Keep, him, keep that in mind. But he is a tall, physical, physically strong guy. Um, stamina is decent at fullback. Low and lofty pass are decent for a fullback, even if he doesn't have pinpoint crossing. On the ball, he's tall. He's got poor balance. And the, these technicals here aren't great. So when you get the ball with this guy, you're going to want to look to just take a touch and just pass it to a teammate. Don't hang on to the ball. Don't try any dribbling. He's not going to be great on the ball. But yeah. He's very much built as a defensive fullback. And if you like a defensive fullback, just to defend and be almost like an extra centre back out wide. Could be an effective one, just not quite the quickest. So yeah, depending on what what you want from your fullback, could be a pretty solid card to pick up. Not an amazing one though. And then we have Jean Neves from Benfica. Had a couple of versions of Jean Neves before. Um, there was a, a match pass one. I think the previous match pass he was on there. Um, Pretty similar on the whole, to be honest, but the main difference between this one and that one, they've added a few skills. So we've got heading, not sure how useful that is. He's not particularly tall, but uh, he's got heading and they've added track back and interception. So for a centre mid, I think those are pretty, skill pretty good skills to have, especially interception. Already got one touch pass, through passing, weighted pass, outside curler. He's got fighting spirit as well. 
stamina is only 82 keep that in mind he's an orchestrator so he's not gonna be covering too much ground i don't think it's gonna be too big of a problem but he may well get tired fighting spirit will help with that so he's got a good section of skills on the whole it's, to be honest he's pretty similar to that match pass card and i think they may have upgraded the ba his base card since then because his base card looks pretty similar to this as well not a big difference certainly we've got the extra skills on there although you can obviously train the base card uh, and you can train the, the match pass version if you pick that one up as well but uh yeah uh very nice on the ball um very nice passing defensively not the strongest i think as an orchestrator i'll be looking to play him as a sentiment orchestrator and have someone behind him doing the defending rather than leave him as a dmf and expect him you know giving defensive responsibilities although he's not the worst in terms of his defensive attributes he does have interception as well pretty average pace for a center mid the balance is decent as i mentioned stamina's are a little bit on the low side not a lot of physical contact he's a small guy so he's definitely not going to be a physical presence in there like i say you're going to want at least one other midfielder in there to be a physical presence and to be to be defensively strong i think but this guy technically is very nice he's got some very nice skills to back that up as well so on the ball and with his passing very nice with a reasonably low center of gravity and, and reasonable balance he should feel pretty nice on the ball uh and on the whole yeah i think he's a pretty nice midfielder i think it just depends on on what you want from a center mid like i say the orchestrated player style is going to kind of hang quite deep he's not going to make too many attacking runs He's not the strongest physically and not too strong defensively, although he's competent. But yeah, with his qualities, technically on the ball with his passing, good skill set as an orchestrator, kind of deep line playmaker, could be a very nice midfielder to pick up if he suits you. And now our second booster, we've got Rodrigo. So they've changed him from a roaming flank to a deep line forward. And they've made him a centre forward with his register position. His base card can play as a centre forward now, though. Um, so, yeah, uh, deep line forward playing style. Not everyone's cup of tea. I don't like it personally. A deep line forward as a centre forward will kind of hang deep. They'll want to get involved with the build up and they won't be made very aggressive with their attacking runs. They're not going to make a lot of runs in behind the defence like a goal poacher will. Can be frustrating. I find it frustrating. It's not for me, really. Um, but he can still play out wide. I wouldn't play him on the right as a right footer. Uh, he's not got outside curl or pinpoint crossing. I don't think that's really his position. But I think wide left is where you're going to probably want to look to play this guy uh, to get the most out of him. Uh, if you look at the way his, his, his attributes are, um, they've actually nerfed his technicals a little bit. Um, but the finishing has had a nice boost. Kicking power's had a bit of a boost. Still a decent pace, decent balance. He's nice in the ball, even if he's not as good technically as he could be. Attacking as, as a striker is a bit low at 84. If you're playing wide left, I think that's good, though. Um, as I say, I think wide left, he will be at his most effective. We've had previous versions of Rodrigo. Obviously, we've had a whole bunch of them. Um, we've had a player of the week. I think the Champions League player of the week was a goal poacher. So that was a very different play style. Uh, suits him much better as a centre forward, in my opinion. Uh, I've got that card. It's very nice. Very effective as a super sub. Um, the previous deep lying forward version in player of the week was a bit better than this. Although this is a booster, so... We'll hit that booster. What have we got? We've got dribbling, tight possession, speed and balance. So, yeah, pretty nice. Uh, and again, I think playing on wide left, that's where that that's where the the booster is going to make you know going to be the most useful. So I think that kind of strengthens my opinion that, that this guy's best as a wide left player. Um, if we have a look at the skills, they're giving him long range shooting. I think long range curves in the one as well. It is. So he's already got a few skill moves for those who like to dribble. Uh, soul control is obviously a nice one. Acrobatic finishing. He's got a first time shot. Uh, that will help certainly as a, a centre forward if you do play as a centre forward. Through passing he's already got. And of course he's a super sub. But long range curler, long range shooting. So yeah. Can you play him as a centre forward? Absolutely. He can do a job that he's got pace, the attacking awareness. You know, it's not bad. Uh, it's just not as high as I'd like it to be. Uh, finishing is fantastic. And he's very nice in the ball. Especially with the, with the booster activated when he's an A-form. So yeah, as a centre forward, can definitely be a, a good option. But I think playing this guy wide left, especially on form, the pace, you know, with the game plan boost, it'll be 90 plus on both speed and acceleration. Good balance, really nice on the ball. Attacking where playing him out wide is very good. Don't know as too much of his passing, that's clearly not his strength. But uh, finishing 92 before the game plan boost and with the skills he's got, obviously first time shot, long range cutter, long range shooting. Coming off that left flank, getting into positions to, to get a shot away on his right foot. Especially as a super sub as well. I think it's a really nice card. So yeah, maybe he's not the best version of Rodrigo we've had. And I don't think that play style is a great one for a centre forward. But playing wide left, play style won't be active. I think it could be pretty effective there. So yeah, if you've not got a better version of Rodrigo, I think it's a very good card. 
and now we have Luis Diaz from Liverpool. So another one where they've taken a few attributes down. Ball control is down a bit. Part of possession is down a bit. Kicking power and balance are both down a bit, all compared to his GP card. I don't know why they do that, but the rest of his attributes are up a bit. He's got great pace. He's, got, he's going to be great on the ball with that 94 dribbling, even with the control and time possession being, uh, you know, decreased a bit from his GP card. They're still decent enough, but dribbling 94, that pace is crazy. He's not got the best balance, to be fair. Um, I don't know how great he's going to feel on the ball. 180 centimetres. He's not going to have a low center of gravity. As you'd expect from the skills, he's got a bunch of skill moves. I think the drivers will, will like this guy. If you like doing skill moves, soul control is a very nice one to have as well. Um, they've given him first time shot. So that's a nice one when he's cutting in from the left if he gets, gets into a shooting position. Acrobatic finishing as well. He's got pinpoint crossing, but his passing low and off did a really bad. So be very careful when you pass the ball with this guy. Even with crossing, don't ask too much of him. Keep it simple and you can get away with it. But he's not got great end product when it comes to passing. Outside curve is a nice enough one. If you play him on the right-hand side, cutting inside especially, it could be useful. Um, no look pass. I don't know how useful that's going to be. But uh, yeah, certainly first time shots a good one to, to add to this guy. So clearly, you know, similar to Harvey Barnes, he's that type of player. Again, you've got the pace, you've got the dribbling. You're just going to want to get this guy into shooting positions and get shots away. Yeah, and if that's the kind of player you want, if those are the kind of strengths you want to play to, it could be a very effective card. Um, like I say, the big concern for me, passing is terrible. Don't ask too much with his passing, but outside of that, if he suits the way you play, you want someone who's quick, who's going to be great at dribbling, could be a really fun card to pick up. And we finish with our final booster. We have a whole player, Rafael Leal. So, first things first, whole player, active at left midfield, not active as a left winger, wide left forward, whatever you want to call it, or a centre forward. Can still play in those positions without an active playing style. I never have an issue with that personally. But if you want the whole player playing style active, left midfield. Um, how does he compare? I mean, we've had better versions. Obviously, we've had one or two legend versions. Um, there was a Champions League player of the week version, which I think was also a whole player. And that one had, I think, more physical contact. And that was a super sub. Um, this one otherwise is pretty similar, uh, but skill wise, instead of being a super sub, we've got one touch pass and no look pass and a possibly heel check. Is, is they giving him no look pass? Uh, it's not a great skill to add, but yeah, one touch pass, certainly. Um, yeah, already got long range curler, uh, soul control, obviously he's a good dribbler. Anyone who's used any version of this guy, you'll know he's good on the ball. He's not just quick and good at dribbling, but he's quite big and physical as well. So he can be really hard to knock him off the ball. But uh, playing wide left, long range curler, I wouldn't play him as a striker. Um, he's not got the attacking awareness. He's not got a first time shot. So personally, I don't see him as a centre forward. But um, wide left, like I say, with the pace, great dribbling. His tight possession is a bit low. Um, I'd like that to be higher. Low and lofty pass. Could be a bit higher. Certainly, it's not too bad. And when we looked at Lewis Diaz, you can, you can see it could have been lower. So, can't complain too much. But, yeah, don't ask too much with a low and lofted pass because they're not brilliant. He does have one-touch pass, though. Um, finishing 83 is good. Good balance. Physical contact when you get your game plan boost should hit 80. So, yeah, he's going to be good on the ball. It's going to be hard to knock off the ball. He's got the skill moves. He's got one-touch pass now. Good finishing. And that whole player playing style. If you play on left midfield, it'll make some very nice runs. You'll be getting into, good, getting into spaces, taking up good positions. As a forward, certainly wide left without the playing style active. Could be very effective still. Probably play more like a prolific winger. Um, centre forward, I wouldn't play him there. No play style active. Not enough attacking awareness. No first time shot. But for me, wide left could be very effective. I got the first legend version they made of him. Obviously, this one's not quite as good as that. But uh, it's not going to be a huge difference. It's still a good version of him. Whole player playing style as well is very nice. And before I forget, he's got a booster. And that just makes him even quicker. So his pace is obscene. Before your game plan boost, 97, 95, he's going to be rapid. Uh, boost on his balance as well. Just going to make him even harder to knock off the ball. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good version of layout. That, like I say, there have been one or two better versions of him, especially the legend versions. But um, it's a nice playing style to have if you use him as a left midfielder. He's got plenty of quality. He's going to be great on the ball. Inconsistent form. Keep that in mind. But when he is on form, that's irrelevant. A form, you're going to get a nice boost. So, yeah, unless you, you've got one of the legend cards, you've got a better, better version of him. I think it's a pretty decent version of layout, especially with that whole stuff, whole player playing style. So yeah, there you go. 
I think on the whole, it's an all right player of the week. I don't think it's a brilliant one. Um, there's one or two that, depending on the type of players you like in each position, could be useful if they suit you. The likes of Neves, the likes of Hanchko even, could be very effective ones to pick up. Fans of Sergio Ramos, that could be a really nice version of Ramos to pick up. Newcastle fans like me, I want the Harvey Barnes. Solid keeper. I think Rodrigo Diaz and Rafael Leal, all three of these, the, the highest rate in the pack. If they suit the way you play, if they're your cup of tea and you've not got a better version, they could be really good cast to pick up. So, yeah, I don't think it's an amazing selection, but I don't think it's a particularly bad one either. I think it's just all right on the whole. It's just a kind of fairly decent one. So, yeah, there you go. And before I go, for anyone who watched my little tutorial to position trainers, you'd have seen my luck trying to get Rui Costa SS. I've used all my position trainers so far trying to do so, and I've got absolutely nothing for it except defensive midfield, which is useless. But I've got one more position trainer, and I might as well do it on this video. So wish me luck. Let's try and get SS. <laughs> well, at least we got left midfield. Could have been worse. But the search goes on. Anyway, thanks for watching as always. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll see you in the next video.